hello and welcome to our wonderful little tea party this afternoon. Ew, what are you drinking? Uh, I'm obviously drinking tea, one of the greatest drinks on the entire planet. That is so last year, we all know where it's at, people, and that's coffee. Coffee is better than tea, uh, right? So it turns out people are pretty fiercely divided between two drinks, coffee and tea. And since I mostly only drink coffee and Mitch pretty much only drinks tea, we thought we'd have a little bit of a scientific debate over which one's better. Because, because science! Okay, well first of all, this isn't even a debate when it comes to popularity. Yes, in North America, coffee might have the edge, but worldwide, 1.6 billion cups of coffee are consumed every day, but nearly twice as much tea is consumed every day. So. Take that. Well, good thing this isn't a popularity contest, this is a scientific debate. And one thing that's very interesting is obviously we know that coffee has the ability to stain your teeth, that's not the best thing, but dentists actually say that black tea has a higher ability to stain your teeth because there are more tannins, so drink on up, yellow teeth freak. My teeth are real nice and white. <laughs> Compare. One of the most amazing things about tea is that it actually has something called antioxidants in it, like flavonoids, which have been linked to a slew of awesome health benefits from decreasing your risk of heart disease and even cancer. Whereas there's actually been some studies on coffee that have shown an increased risk for cancer. Well, okay, that's cheating because those studies are flawed and here is why. These findings are from earlier and they did not take into account the fact that smoking and physical inactivity were actually higher amongst people who drank more coffee. In fact, later studies found that six cups of coffee per day have no links to death from heart disease or cancer. And the truth is that most of the health benefits seen in your tea is also seen in my coffee. Many studies show that drinking it shows a level of protection for breast cancer, prostate cancer, and more. Plus, us coffee drinkers have a 35% lower incidence of type 2 diabetes, so drink up, buttercup. Well, at least we're not linked to smoking and inactivity, so. And even if we were, tea has actually been shown to help lose weight. A compound called EGCG, along with the caffeine in something like green tea in particular, actually helps to shrink fat cells, which you could actually use. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a burn, but at least I didn't buy expensive running shoes two years ago that I didn't use for two years because I actually run. <laughs> no, they were fashionable. I wore them for fashion. You bought them for running and you <laughs> never left that. So yes, some studies have shown that in fact tea can shrink fat cells, but coffee is the winner when it comes to actually gaining muscle mass, something that I'm interested in. <laughs> a study looking at men and coffee consumption actually found that those who drank around two cups hours before working out were able to sprint 9% longer than those who hadn't. Essentially, the coffee and the caffeine helps with your workout session. So I'm about to have a sip and go bench press a small horse. Well, did you know that the Chinese emperor actually talked about the health benefits of tea in almost 2700 BCE? Now, that's a long time ago that we've known about this, but there's another drink we've been enjoying for nearly that long as well, and do you know what it is, Greg? What is it, coffee? It's, it's definitely not coffee. <laughs> it's actually beer. I love beer. Yeah, who doesn't love beer? And I mean tea and beer in the same category of fondness with humans. I mean, I don't mind being in that category, but I mean, yeah, do you, so. oh, no. <laughs> This is for us, tea lovers. Coffee contains a lot more caffeine in it, which is an important part of my daily kick and you know, accomplishing more work than you do on a daily basis. <laughs> caffeine can actually be felt by your body in around 10 minutes and it stimulates other chemicals and hormones in your body that keep you active and stimulate your heart rate and blood pressure. Well, what if I want to be calm and collected, which often people do when they drink tea instead of all hyped up and jazzed like you are. <laughs> in fact, some studies have shown that people who drink jasmine and lavender tea actually decrease their heart rate before even drinking the tea just by smelling it. Tea lovers have such a spiritual connection with their tea that they don't even need to taste it to have the effects of it. So you think that would make you less stressed, wouldn't you? Yeah, obviously. Well, actually, it turns out that coffee drinkers are less stressed than tea drinkers. What? Exhibit A. <laughs> Am I exhibit A? <laughs> we both are, because I'm less stressed than you at all times. Oh, okay. You'd think it would be the opposite because there's more caffeine in coffee and that beautiful chemicals flowing through your body and just giving you that oomph. But they actually found when they did a survey in the UK that 10% of coffee drinkers reported to be very stressed, whereas 12% of tea drinkers reported to be very stressed. So, I don't know. Why don't you just ask the UK? Okay, okay, well I have one final point to consider and that is that many people out there actually consider, many scientists and well-educated people consider tea to actually be better for you than water. 
Because water, you see, when you drink water, you're simply replacing the fluid in your body, which is obviously important. Essential to life. Yeah, exactly. But with tea, it's like you're doing that. You're replacing the fluids, but you're also getting things like antioxidants and all the goodness of tea. And it's highly contested how much of a diuretic tea is, whether it is or not, which means you pee out more than you take in. There's a lot of debate around that. So in many cases, people argue you, it isn't a diuretic, so you're drinking water plus antioxidants. Tea is better than water. Bam! Okay, okay, before this stressed out tea drinker bites my head <laughs> off, I think we can both say that there are good things and bad things, mostly good things, about drinking coffee and tea in moderation. Especially the way it makes you feel. <laughs> yeah. As well, it is understood that 300 milligrams of caffeine a day is actually not bad for you, and in many cases can actually be quite good for you and part of a healthy lifestyle. So in that case, we both sort of win because there's caffeine in both of our bevies. Yeah, I just win a little bit more. All right, well, what do you guys think? Do you have any other scientific evidence for either tea or coffee? Which do you prefer? Let us know in the comments. So we love debating and we love scientific debates. We think it's really fun doing the research. So let us know what ideas or, you know, concepts you think that the two of us should debate yeah. out for a future video yeah. with science. Give us some stuff to fight over. We love it. And also make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat. Subscribe to ASAP Thoughts. So you can see our weekly vlogs on Saturdays and more videos like this every Wednesday. And so yeah, in the meantime, we hope you have a good day and peace. I actually, actually don't like beer. I'm actually like green living right now and I'm like really interested in like green. all the news. So. You can live it. Nah, it's green. no, I'm not into that. <laughs> okay, that. beer for the tea drinkers. Kale juice for me for the rest of my life, sorry. And coffee. <laughs>